Welcome back to Lethal PC, and today I want to show you guys how to SLI. It is so easy. In this day and age, scalable leak interface or the action of taking two graphic cards and having, having them run in parallel can bring a huge increase in performance. Now, a lot of people go, do I really need two graphic cards? Can I just buy one really high-end one? There's a lot of different scenarios where SLI or multiple graphic cards will come in handy. And there's a lot of scenarios where it won't come in handy. Now, if you're the guy who's sitting back playing 1080p video games and you have a small 17 inch monitor, you have an old two core processor, you know, going three way SLI in your system is probably not the way you want to go. But if you're the guy who's running 12 or, you know, 1200p, 1440p, 4K, you're getting into the upper echelon of gaming and want to sustain 60 frames per second or higher or let's just say you're upgrading and staying at 1080p but you're going to 120 hertz or 144 hertz monitor you want a graphics card that's going to output 120 frames a second 144 frames a second or if you're at 4k keep you above 60 frames a second and with some games at super high settings that could be pretty demanding and it requires some beefy graphic cards in this case my setup i'm running two gtx titan blacks on a 4K resolution monitor. And what I found is, is in most of the games I play, I can hit 60 frames per second, but on the heavy games like Battlefield 4, first person shooters that have heavy textures, it, it required a second card to be able to push over 60 frames per second consistently. So in most people's cases, you may have a 660 Ti or a 770 or a 760. And in this case, going to a second 770 or a second 660 Ti and throwing those cards in SLI may be more cost beneficial than upgrading to, let's just say, a brand new 980 or a 970. Mainly because a lot of the previous gen cards have dropped in price and you can go SLI and get performance above maybe some of the newer cards for a lot less money. Jumping into SLI is really easy and connecting up SLI is even easier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna take my system and show you how to take two cards, throw them in SLI and enable it within Windows and be off on your way to start doing some awesome game benchmarking or playing your games at much higher frame rates and just overall having an enjoyable time. It's never fun hitting a brand new game, cranking up everything and running at 25 frames a second. It's just, for most people that's not playable, some people can tolerate it. I have no idea how, but you know, hopefully I can help you get 60 frames per second and feel a little bit more confident in uh, setting up your system in SLI and getting that going. So for the purposes of this video, today we're gonna to be SLIing two NVIDIA GTX Titan Blacks. You see, I have my second card here, and my first card is already installed into my system. Now, first and foremost, when you are installing a graphics card into your system, whether it's a big full-size card like the GTX Titan, um, or even a smaller card like a 760 Ti, 750, et cetera, if you're gonna do SLI or install any card, um, even for the purpose of this demo, you always wanna install the card and make sure it's fastened. So one, it's pushed all the way in, clipped in, and two, you have at least one screw holding that card in place. The reason why is the smallest amount of weight on that PCI Express adapter on the motherboard can cause the connections to come free. Uh, so if you let that card just hang there, that can cause problems for you. Same thing with the card itself. If it's just hanging in a slot, I mean, these are not like cards, uh, you could do damage to it. I've seen so many videos online where I see guys running SLI or doing tech demos like this to give you guys some insight on how it's done and they basically jeopardize their motherboards, their graphic cards, etc. So when you're working in your system, always make sure you're properly installing the cards, even for little quick videos like this. Um, I mean, the only other way that uh, you can get away with it, and I wouldn't say you have to have a screw, is if your, your case is laying flat and the weight is all pushing down on the board. Uh, but even then, you want to make sure it's seated into the PCI Express slot properly. Uh, but in this case, um, because I already have one card in, so let's just say you're running your system right now. Um, let's pretend this is a, a GTX 770. 
Um, probably a most common card that people drop down to. It's a lower price point. Um, and it actually, in, in the end, only costs maybe $100 more to get into a second card. And you can get way beyond the performance of 1780 or a 780 Ti um, for the cost uh, overall. So for maybe a couple hundred dollars more for two 770s, you get like 30, 40% more performance over 1780, which is awesome. You know, performance per dollar is great that way. Um, so in this case, uh, so you open up your system, let's say you got your second card like we do have here. Um, what I actually do is I uninstall the first card because I like to install the cards in a matter bottom up. And the reason for that is it's sometimes really hard to see where those cards are, especially if you're installing it in a state like this where the case is standing upright. Um, and it just allows you to um, not, make sure you're not bumping the back of the cards or knocking off any resistors or anything hanging off the back of the cards. Um, it's just overall a safer way to install your product. So I'm gonna unscrew this one. These cards have little clips right there. There we go. So I'm gonna drop this card and put it in this slot here. And like I mentioned earlier, sorry, my arm is totally blocking the camera. I always put one screw in to make sure that it is nice and tight in there. So now I have my, my first card in the second slot. And now I'm gonna take my second card. And now you can clearly see, it's easy to see the install on this. Because I can, I have full view of the PCI Express slot. I can just push you right in. Sorry, I'm trying to do this while recording is not the easiest thing to do. As you see, I'm making sure I have the weight of the card on my hand. I'm never letting it go. So now we have both cards in, in the system. Now, one thing I should caveat is you should always make sure to read your motherboard uh, manual. Your motherboard's manual is gonna highlight how that motherboard can support SLI, whether it needs to be stacked, whether this card needs to go down a slot, however your motherboard works, and in some cases it supports it in all of the slots combined, you just wanna make sure you're doing it properly. So now that both cards are installed, it's time to link them up. We'll use this bridge and I'll show you the difference. And the nice thing is, is with the dual tab cards, you can connect them either way. Um, it should work uh, whether you collect, connect it on this tab or this tab. Um, it's really up to you. It's only when you do three and four way SLI, you have to make sure you're using the proper connectors. Um, but I'm, we're gonna go ahead and use the new claw you see it just slides right on in there, make sure it's nice and snug. You'll want to get your power adapters, so these being Titan Blacks, they are going to require uh, an 8 and a 6 pin connector. And again, just because I have these all cabled together, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Um, but what I do for 2A SLI, I'm using the EVGA um, 1200 P2 power supply. On the back side, you'll see the, you can't really see in this video, but there's three sets of VGA connectors. And what I'm doing is the side-by-side -side plugs. So plug one and plug two, it goes side-by-side. -side. I use that for one card, the other two below it for another card, the other two below it for the other card. That's how I'm hooking it up. It really just depends on your power supply on how it's supported. If you don't have a power supply that doesn't have enough PCI Express, you most graphic cards do come with Molex adapters. So if you don't have the proper power, most graphic cards will come with adapters. So these are standard Molex connectors, and this is a PCIe 6 uh, connection. So you'll need to plug in both 
of these to a Molex connection. So you'll need to have two available Molex connectors to power the one six pin. Um, it's really important that you hook up both. So keep that in mind. And usually most big cards like this will come with both, um, both a six pin and an eight pin. So we have the power connectors connected. We have our SLI bridge connected. Now we can turn the power back onto our system because when you're installing this, you never want to have the power on. You never know what can be tap touched or anything. You would hate to short out your motherboard or even your pricey graphic cards. Uh, that's never a good way to go. Now I have my display port plugged in. We're ready to turn it on. Now, just because we have our cards properly powered, we have our cards connected for SLI, the next step is to actually enable SLI in the NVIDIA control panel within Windows. That is the next crucial step, and once that's completed, SLI is properly set up and ready to go. Let's go check that out. Now, once your drivers are installed, you're gonna to wanna to go into the NVIDIA control panel. If you right click on your desktop, launch NVIDIA control panel, you're gonna see under 3D settings, and apologize, 4K monitors are not so friendly to record off of, but you'll see under 3D settings, configure SLI, surround, and physics. Now, in general, if your two cards are powered on properly, set up properly, all of that greatness, it is gonna ask you, or it will show you right here, the configure SLI. If it is not installed properly, so say you maybe the power cable's not all the way in, or you set the cards up wrong on the motherboard, so the motherboard's not recognizing both cards and the SLI format, that configure SLI will just not be there. You will not see the option there. And in this instance, because I was running SLI previously before I shut down the system, it's still enabled. But what I'm gonna do is disable it so you can see the option there. Try this up. So configure SLI. So let me go, let me step all the way back. So right click your desktop, NVIDIA control panel. Again, the NVIDIA control panel option will only show up if you have your NVIDIA driver installed properly. And you can install those from nvidia.com. Just head over to their website and download the proper driver for your card. So you should know what card you have. Look for that series, your operating system, install. Easy as that. Go in the NVIDIA control panel. Typically it defaults to this screen, but go to configure SLI surround. You will want to select the option under SLI configuration to maximize 3D performance. And because I'm only running two cards, I don't have a dedicated physics card or anything crazy like that. What you'll typically want to do is make sure your physics or physx setting is set for auto select, which is a recommended setting. Now, if you are crazy enough to have a separate card to run your physics, this is where you would change that. So that card would show up and you would select that card to run your physics. Once you have your setting set up, you go ahead and hit apply. Um, you'll see it goes through a few uh, settings just to enable everything and bam once you see that this SLI is set up and good you know you're running SLI and you got both your cards connected and going it's as easy as that there you have it we set up the cards in SLI we have enabled it within Windows within the NVIDIA control panel, um, even showed you how to set physics, etc. But now you're ready just to jump into games and increase your performance. Now again, is SLI worth it? It can be, it really can be. If you're running an i3 to an i7 processor and you have a mid-range card and you're just not happy with your gaming performance and you might have 150, 200 bucks burning a hole in your pocket, you know, grabbing one extra card, throwing that in, linking them up, flip an SLI on, you're gonna enjoy gaming for probably another one, two years without having to spend any more money on your system. Uh, hopefully this guide was somewhat helpful for you. Appreciate you guys stopping by the channel and checking it out. And as always, leave us comments below. I love reading the comments. If you have any questions where I didn't cover something off properly, ask away. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.